What is happening, YouTube? Cowboy here, and we are back with part two of our walkthrough. So, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, uh, at this point in the game, you can actually go and access one of the first bosses. So, typical progression would be just straight down here, and you'll go through um, the next area, which is the Corvian Settlement. But we're actually going to cross this bridge first. Uh, typically, you know, you cross the bridge, you'd see what's up here, and then you would go towards the Corvian Settlement area. But we're going to go down this... Uh, ladder, which we'll make from the bridge, and then take out that boss now, just because it'll get you guys access to the PvP a lot earlier, so uh, hit this, very similar to how we enter the Smoldering Lake. A couple Corvians, we're gonna kill here. These guys won't do anything if you don't attack them, so you can feel free to just ignore them completely. Um, we're gonna go right back here to grab the Hollow Gem. You can talk to this guy if you want. Well, you're He's, he's basically just a douche. Why, you miserable one? Uh, we actually fight him later, but anyway, we're gonna go in here for now just to grab a bonfire. Uh, it'll make things a lot easier and allow us to not have to come back this way later. So, go in here, grab this, and talk to good old sister. Frida. Make sure to run through her dialogue twice. We'll get the chill bite ring that'll help against frost. And now you'll see a ladder here. Up here, there'll be an NPC later. Uh, she's actually the younger sister of Sister Freed. Uh, Frida, excuse me. But, um, you know, nothing really happens with her. She just, she has some very interesting dialogue related to the lore, but that's it. So anyway, now that we've gotten that done, we're gonna go down this ladder and we're gonna make our way into an area known as the Depths of the Painting. Now, a couple nice things we're going to get down here. Um, we get a new weapon, which is actually the saber I've been looking to pick up on this character. Aside from that, we're also going to gain access to a uh, Titanite slap, so that's very nice. And, of course, we have a boss. So, what you're going to want to do... Where's our, where's our dude at here? There he is. A um, couple enemies here. There's our first one. Plunge attack. And you'll see another one there. Right there. We're going to... Also, launch attack. And then we're going to follow this along, and there's going to be a twinkling lizard. Now, it's important to note that there are two of those uh, great bow enemies that we encountered previously that are going to start shooting arrows at you. I'll be pointing them out in a moment. All right, lizard suicided. That's fine. And you can already see the, uh, the great bows coming at us. As you can see on those guys, it's actually pretty easy to guard break them too. Uh, now, if you have a uh, bow, this is actually a fantastic time to use it. The first Millwood Knight is above us. But we're going to end up taking the long way around to get to him. We're going to grab that ember. And the other one is down in front of us. So what we want to do is go this way. We're going to be really careful here. Drop. You want to be careful, but don't go too slow. So as you can see, they uh, they will shoot those arrows at you. Oh, oh, oh! Wow, the fact that I did not die there is amazing. That's why it's recommended that you just have a bow to take care of this guy. Um, this character doesn't have a bow that's upgraded. I've never bothered just because he's a pyromancer. Didn't feel it would ever be needed. There we go. And that's one archer dead, which will make your life a lot easier. So, uh, just to kind of show where we're at, uh, right back here, that's where we first drop down. There's that, that first enemy we plunging attack. And if you decide you don't want to go down, you can actually take this all the way up, and it'll drop you right back off um, to where we can access that ladder again. But we're going to... Continue on. Actually, we're going to roll down to here. I'm going to heal up a little bit. Um, and we're going to get the Follower's Saber. So we're going to drop down there. And then there. And the follower Saber. Excellent weapon. We're going to go into that in just a second. Not going to show that while we're sitting here. Oh boy. 
Um, now, this part, I would suggest just running for a moment. We have a uh, torch guy that's behind me and this guy. And we're going to even run even further because we have our bonfire right over here. So that torch guy is right before the very last drop. Uh, but more importantly, we just want to get here, get to the bonfire now that we've made our way down here. And then, um, you know, we can rest, of course. They'll reset, go back. No real reason that you have to kill them. Uh, he's right up there. You can kind of see him with his torch. Uh, but now that that's done, let's take a look at the new sword, which I'm going to actually be upgrading after the next episode. And that is the Follower Saber. 914 requirement compared to 913 on the regular falchion. Um, and it's really nice curved sword. In particular, the weapon art for this is quite devastating. So really excited to try this one out and, uh, and check it out. See how powerful it's going to be once I get it upgraded. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be going to the left here. There are three, well, two crabs on the way, and then one crab on the way back. So take out the crabs however you please, whether it's going to be with uh, fire or with trying to stagger them. Of course, they're just as annoying as crabs always are. Personally, I don't feel there's any one good way to fight crabs. Um, staggering works pretty well, but you got to have really high attacks to be able to actually stagger the crabs. Um, in particular, I find it's really easy if you have a, a heavy strength type weapon, you can actually stagger them pretty easily. Um, right now, he's kind of derping out, which is good for us. And as you can see, they are frost crabs, so he's going to do the same frost breath attack that's similar to the frost trees. I don't know why he's insistent on just slow walking now, but it makes things a lot easier. Maybe it's just an orientation type thing. But anyway, they'll die. You'll end up getting yourself a crystal gem off of them. And now we're going to run this way. Now you can see we can go straight or we can go up. We're going to go up temporarily just to help snipe the trees, um, but that's the path that we want to take. So here's our first tree. bone and there's going to be a ladder here uh, in just a moment but we need to get past some of these trees first to get it we got one more tree Here. Get snap freeze, new sorcery, and then uh, just checking my notes here. Um, do, 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 do. Yep, snap freeze. Okay, yep. And now we can go back. <clears throat> Having killed that one and picked up snap freeze, you notice a ladder has now appeared. So now we're going to take that path up, and get that ladder, and we're going to go all the way up, and it's going to give us a slab. There's actually three slabs in this DLC. Quite nice. Um, they're all relatively easy to get too. You get one right here. Um, you get one towards the very end of the game just from talking to an NPC, and then you get one after clearing the second phase of the primary boss fight. So it is a bit of a climb, but, you know, just head on up. How you guys doing today? Everyone good? Hope so. Been a good day for me so far. And after we grab this, <clears throat> we're actually going to homeward bone back, just because it'll save us some time instead of going all the way down the ladders again. Almost there. <clears throat> Diet Night Slab. And actually, we can do this part real... No, we'll, we'll come and do that later. Um, so yeah, pop your bone. If you do decide to go manually down, you will encounter a, a third crab that'll pop up out of the ice on your way back. I just picked the wrong area. And here we are back at the depths of the painting bonfire. I actually decided since I went there anyway, I started upgrading my follower saber, but I ran out of freaking chunks. So anyway, from the bonfire, we're going to go this way, and we're actually going to be tackling our first boss. So we just run on over here. Um, you can see back over there, that's where we have our archer friend. Uh, now this boss fight is 
two phases, basically. Uh, we have a champion guy that we're going to fight. Uh, aside from him, he'll have a couple wolves. You can kind of see him right over there. And then he'll summon the big wolf that we encountered previously. So the best thing to do here is you want to take out the champion before the big wolf shows up. Um, his attacks aren't particularly bad. Uh, he'll charge in a little bit. He has his shield bash. But I will say, I'm having a lot more trouble with this as a pyromancer than I was on my other characters. As you can see, though, he does like he hits kind of hard, but you can stagger him, you can parry him, you can backstab him. Uh, but the big thing is to get this guy down before the wolf shows up. You can abuse these pillars I'm using against the wolf. Uh, we don't even see the wolf yet. There it is. Uh, we want to get the grave tender down, like right now. There we go. He decided to start casting. That makes things easier for an easy backstab on us. Uh, so the wolf does the same thing that he did before. You'll see this. We'll call that wolf dash. Um, aside from that, he has kind of a body lunge slash bite. There's his bite. Wolf dash one. Wolf dash two. Um, and aside from that, he'll do a breath attack occasionally, but he's not that bad. There's the bite. There's the bite. Let's see if he'll do the shoulder check. Yep, there's the shoulder check. And that shoulder check can actually go through your shield, so... Be a little careful of it. I mean, all in all, it's not a bad boss, as you can see. Um, now he's howling. He'll go into a minor rage state and do cross breath. But you know, um, while he's doing that, you actually have a pretty open window to just kind of lay into him, like I did right there. You know, he's gonna howl. He's gonna start doing his breath, and we were able to just really nuke him down. Um, so I hope you guys were still able to hear me. The, the boss fight music in Dark Souls is always ridiculously loud. Uh, but anyway, for taking him out, we actually get Valor Heart, the sword and shield combo that we saw the champion using. Uh, very interesting weapon. I think we're going to see a lot of people using this. I think that's going to be kind of a new fun meta thing we're going to see a lot of. Uh, and then in addition to that, you know, over in our key items, you'll see we picked up Champion's Bones. And we can burn these over at Firelink Shrine, and that will actually unlock the... Um, that will unlock the PvP arena. Uh, aside from that, there's nothing else in this area. There's a, a gravestone here with a, a sword in it, but that's it. So, yeah, relatively short area. Um, you know, whenever you're ready, feel free to bonfire on out, and that wraps the zone up.